How can you decrease cortisol? Does your exercise help or hurt? I'm revisiting this topic because cortisol is such an important consideration for women in menopause. The combination of cortisol and the hormone insulin often together team up to result in belly fat. And that means weight loss resistance. So I've had a question and it is this, are there studies showing exercise elevates cortisol? Because someone else said exercise reduces cortisol. Now that is from Sandra and she is from the Flipping 50 community. And we're revisiting the answer that I gave, but it's got several updates. So stay tuned. And this is a topic worth revisiting. There are two considerations. Number one, there's no flat answer. And so I guess that makes three. But before I give the two, there is no one answer for everybody, a blanket statement. There's a if this, then that response. But what's important is the type and the timing of the exercise that you do in conjunction with the status that you currently have. And then the next question is, as she's talking about, there are studies probably that show, she said somebody else said, so I'm interpreting that as there are studies that show exercise reduces cortisol. And indeed, that's true. But what you want to look at is the population studied, was it you? Was it women in menopause? What was the exercise that they looked at? Was it yoga or was it high intensity interval training? Was it daily or was it at the right frequency and dose for the person? So many things that you've got to dig a little deeper and ask because nothing is superficial blanket statement for everyone. The question to ask is whether or not your exercise is having a positive or negative effect on stress for you and right now. So you've got to answer that literally in real time because whether it was true for you six months ago and maybe you didn't know everything you know now or whether it will be true in six months if something changes about your stress level and you don't change your exercise in conjunction with it. You want to look at whether or not the type and the timing of your exercise has a positive or negative effect on stress for you right now, right? So we're really getting customized on this one. The key to decrease cortisol is to find your Goldilocks, yours, and not a generic one-size-fits-all program, and not based on a set of guidelines or recommendations, but based on your hormones, which dictate whether your body stores or burns fat. It is not calories alone. So if you're reading and listening and people say you've got to have a caloric deficit, listen, I've had women become become private clients, join our group programs, and I do consultations with many of our program participants before they begin. And here's what I know. Women often try to create that caloric deficit so vast in effort to lose weight faster that they stress their bodies and make their bodies store more fat because your body, when it feels under threat from disease, from you feeding it too little fuel. And if you try to exercise on top of that, even worse, it will shut down, burn fewer calories, slow your metabolism. And that's the point where you get tired. You get hungry. You don't actually want to do the workout anymore. Now that happens when Uh, about one or two weeks after, if you're lucky, sometimes it happens one day after a really hard workout. And you're just exhausted and you have to recover for the rest of the week before you then get on that whole bandwagon and try it again. Not connecting the dots that is actually the exercise that's causing the stress that is going to cause you to hold on to weight and your body to say, nope, not doing this, trying to give you a warning, trying to message you here, but you're not getting it. So we're going to just keep messaging you, right? So you've got to really listen to your body. It's talking to you. It's trying to give you feedback about what you're doing. 
And if you don't listen, the little whisper turns into a louder voice, turns into a scream and a yell, and eventually something will break. And that's usually literally an injury or an illness will happen so that we get you to pay attention. Your body will find a way to slow you down if that's what you need. We all have to give up that old dogma that more is better. Longer sessions of moderate exercise, not good. That steady state that you learned decades ago, not good. Actually increase cortisol with less of a positive post-cortisol reduction. Did you hear me? So that low, slow, steady state exercise that quote unquote, everybody said, that's your fat burning zone. That's where you want to be. If you go too high, you'll get out of that fat burning zone. No, no, and no. Reject it. 1980 called, wants it back. All right. A few points for you to keep in mind. High intensity exercise is associated with reduced hot flashes. But yoga and light exercise is not. Now, I'm not trying to dissuade you from doing yoga or light exercise because you may be in a moment where that will be helpful. Keep listening. Reduced body mass index, your BMI, that's your weight to height ratio, is associated with reduced menopause symptoms. So, in a recent episode, I described BMI. I described waist to hip ratio. I described waist circumference and body fat. And I'll link to that if you're unsure of the difference in the value of each of those measures. Let me just give you a hint and disclaimer. Body fat is the one I care the most about. Moderate steady state exercise increases cortisol secretion. 150%. And for females in midlife, that could halt weight loss. Let me read that one again. Moderate, steady state exercise increases cortisol secretion 150%. And let me tell you, those of you who are, I got to do more. I want to burn more calories. And you stay at it longer. That number probably goes up. That percentage goes up. Don't throw yourself under the bus, girlfriend. Late day exercise when it's high intensity can be detrimental due to what's called the pregnenolone steel. I've shared that with you in other podcast episodes. So if you're new to the podcast, I highly recommend that you become an addict, binge on past podcasts, or go to Flipping 50, use the search icon and put in pregnenolone steel and you will find blogs and podcasts that come up on that topic. But that pregnenolone steel has a negative effect of elevated cortisol and then a lack of desired result, decrease in cortisol. When you do high intensity exercise late in the day, you don't get that corresponding low cortisol and you can't go to sleep. That's a problem. High intensity exercise early in the day doesn't cause a negative rise in cortisol because cortisol is already elevated. It does give a little bit more of a bump. However, you get a corresponding reduction in your late day cortisol, which is exactly what you want to help your relaxation and induce sleep easier, better, and deeper. Fasted exercise can also increase muscle breakdown for women in menopause such that the combined morning cortisol, it's higher. Remember, cortisol breaks down muscle. Overnight fasting, by the time you've not eaten for 12, 14, 16, the longer you go, the worse it is, you have more muscle breakdown going on, meaning you're in a state of catabolism, faster breakdown than you're building up. And you add exercise to that, exercise is a catabolic experience. So we just said morning cortisol, breakdown, overnight fasting, breakdown, exercise, breakdown. That's three strikes you're out, girlfriend. Exercise can't overcome loss, loss, potential loss. So all you're really doing is on this treadmill trying not to lose muscle. You're not going to get into an anabolic state. 
you at best are going to break even, but you may not even do that. So one more point, you need to know your cortisol status. If there's one test that you should do, it is a cortisol saliva test. That means you'll be putting probably cotton swabs, like when you go to the dentist and you're having the nasty work done, you'll put that in your cheek in the morning when you wake, at noon, at dinner time, and at bedtime, four times a day. So we're getting a snapshot of what happens because in the morning, your cortisol should be highest. At noon, it should be starting to come down. In the evening, it should be really coming down. And right before you go to bed, it should be even lower. So we're seeing this curve of literally, is that true? Is that what's happening for you and what's normal? If you feel good, we're looking at normal for you. If you don't feel good, we're looking at this is, this is off and what can we do to fix it? You should know that. And if you're struggling with weight loss, it's one of the first things you want to look at in addition to your insulin and glucose levels. So your cortisol levels are likely only short-term elevated when you exercise in the right way. But here's a, a statement. If you're in adrenal fatigue or you have a lot of adrenal stress, you may have cortisol for a very short time, may get you up and that's it. And about an hour later, maybe you need a nap. You may not feel that way. You may feel like it takes a long time to even get awake and get past groggy for you. Your exercise selection, if that's you, has to change. So optimal for you looks very different in this moment than when you're experiencing more optimal ranges of cortisol and energy. You want to focus on restoring. Restore before more is the first tenet of Flipping 50. And if you need to learn more about that, what does that sound like and look like? Watch my TEDx talk and I'll put the link in the show notes for you. Okay, so choose your objective before you choose your exercise. Is it, what's the most important thing to you? Is it weight loss? Is it bone density? Is it decreasing your cortisol level? Yoga may be fantastic for you if you are most in need of rest and relaxation before you go on for more. Because if what you're doing isn't working and you're highly stressed or your cortisol comes back to prove to you that yes, you are, you've got to remove the obstacle to weight loss before exercise that helps fat burning will actually do that. Hear that again. Cortisol could be the gatekeeper. On the other side is the kind of high intensity interval training and the kind of strength training that will actually get you results. But you can't go to the other side until you remove the stress and the cortisol and that resistance that you'll have. So if what you're doing isn't working, don't fix it by trying to band aid and move beyond that to the next step. If what you're doing is working, then great. Don't fix it, but know that you've got a solution if you need to. So if you can successfully lose weight from your exercise, you will reduce menopause symptoms. You've got to be careful not to do it at the expense of your hormones. For weight loss, especially fat loss to occur, you have to have optimal cortisol levels, You want to increase fat oxidation during and after exercise. That happens best with uh, high-intensity interval training when you're ready for it and strength training when you're ready for it. And you want to increase your lean muscle tissue, and you better believe that's only going to happen from the correct kind of strength training. Those two things, so weight loss and fat loss, can only happen with the right timing and type of exercise. You've been brainwashed for decades to believe that more exercise is better and anytime you do exercise is better than not doing exercise at all. During menopause, just as your hormones have changed the way your body responds to many things, it also changes the way you respond to exercise. Timing does matter for you. Do short sessions of high intensity interval training, short strength sessions where you reach muscular fatigue to provide exercise stimulus to offset the negative effects of stress. Do them in the morning. 
and that way you can decrease your cortisol best later in the day. You do use cortisol during those exercise sessions, which means it's temporarily higher. However, you have the appropriate corresponding and desired decrease of cortisol after. Time your exercise early when you're doing intense exercise. And I know I'm beating a dead horse saying it like three different times, but I really need for you to get this. Or if you have to exercise late in the day, it's it's all that happens. The morning went by, you can't do it. Don't make up for the exercise. If you had intervals planned and it didn't happen, late in the day, you don't do it. You actually shift to going for a walk, even with an old dog, even better. Or I've got one, by the way, if you need a friend. Or yoga, if that's relaxing for you. So those things really, really matter. Late day exercise does not give you that beneficial decrease in cortisol. There's just not enough time. And you've done that pregnenolone steal where now you no longer have what you need to get a good night's sleep. Early intense exercise that elevates cortisol rewards you later with the desired drop in cortisol. If you're trying just to fit it in whenever possible to exercise more, all of it will backfire on you. Without optimal quality sleep, you can't have optimal cortisol, testosterone, and growth hormones. So very important to lean muscle and metabolism. So just checking that box off that, oh, I got my intervals in late afternoon may keep you fat and tired. If you've heard this once, probably you've heard it all your life. Timing is everything, but especially when it comes to decreasing cortisol. You might get away with strength training late day. That is one thing that I often will find myself doing as well. It doesn't quite rev you up in the way that a hit does. So I'm not talking about swinging around kettle valves rapidly and going from one exercise to the other in a way that makes you breathless. That is probably less productive to you than lifting weights slowly and effectively to muscular fatigue. So low to moderate exercise intensity of various durations, also helpful. Notice I said low to moderate, not that middle ground. There's really very little benefit there. The important part for you, enjoy it. Go for walks because you enjoy it. Garden because you enjoy it. Play golf because you enjoy it. Stand up at a board because you enjoy it. Focus less on the number of calories you're burning than the number of smiles during the movement. I would love it if this was helpful that you leave us a rating in iTunes. It really helps spread the word so that more women can benefit from the right type and the right timing of exercise. I'll leave in the show notes some information about becoming a Flipping 50 fitness specialist, a menopause expert, if you're a trainer or a health coach. And if you'd like to join the Flipping 50 Insiders community on Facebook, that will also keep you going and keep this conversation going. So share your comments and questions there, and you may just find them in an upcoming episode. If you're listening to this in the middle of summer, you may be in luck and the Flipping 50 membership may still be open. If not, and you feel like it's a great fit, be sure that you visit flipping50.com forward slash cafe And we usually have a notifications list. So when we open, you will be the first to know. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.